Welcome back to the second in our three-part series about the Black-owned banks of Jackson Ward here in Richmond, Virginia. My name is Ranger Mike with the Maggie L. Walker National Historic Site, and today the bank that we're going to be talking about is the Mechanics Savings Bank, run and owned by John Mitchell Jr. Born enslaved in Richmond, Virginia in 1863, by the end of the Civil War he would be freed and he would uh, continue living in Richmond, Virginia, and would eventually attend Richmond Colored Normal School, where he would be class valedictorian. After graduating from that high school, he would move to Fredericksburg, Virginia for just two years, where he would be a teacher, before moving back to Richmond to spend the rest of his life here. He would begin teaching at the Valley School here in Richmond before a new school board was put in place in 1884. When that happens, John Mitchell Jr., along with most of the black teachers in Richmond Public Schools, would be fired. When that happens, John Mitchell Jr. decides to pursue a new career, and he becomes a journalist, where he would eventually be owner and editor of the Richmond Planet, one of the widest spread black newspapers in the South. Here I am on the corner of North 3rd Street and Jackson Street in Jackson Ward. And this building behind me would have been the home of John Mitchell Jr. when he lived here. Although this isn't the exact location, this building was moved here uh, about two decades ago. This would be the building that he would spend his life in here in Jackson Ward. Well, I want to go back. When he first moves back to Richmond, and he's fired from his job as a teacher because of the school board, he pursues a new career, a career that would become his life. He becomes a journalist. And at first, he begins writing for the New York Globe, a black newspaper in New York City. However, just shortly after that, he would actually begin writing for a local newspaper, the Richmond Planet. And although he doesn't start as the founder of that, he would become the owner and editor of the newspaper just a couple years later. And he would take that newspaper to new heights making it one of the widest circulated black newspapers in the South. Eventually, he's recognized by the Afro-American Press Association, where he becomes president, serving two consecutive terms for that organization, gaining more recognition across the country for his work in press. As John Mitchell Jr. would focus his newspaper efforts on equality, social justice, and anti-lynching, he would become well known in Jackson Ward for his efforts. And as he becomes a business leader here, he would join the True Reformers Bank on their board of directors, where he would serve for a number of years. However, because of internal disputes, because of a feud that John Mitchell Jr. had with William Washington Brown, he would leave that bank in 1894. And when he would leave that bank, he wouldn't just leave the board of directors, but he would leave the organization entirely, deciding that he can better spend his time with a different organization. Another operating here in Richmond called the Knights of Pythias. And so he would become the Grand Chancellor of Virginia for the Knights of Pythias, the person that would be running the entire organization in this state. He would begin traveling throughout the state, recruiting new members and opening new lodges in new communities, and expanding that organization throughout the state. John Mitchell Jr. would successfully run the Richmond Planet, expanding it to new areas. He would be, as Grand Chancellor of the Knights of Pythias, expanding that organization throughout Virginia and making it more accessible to more members. But one of the biggest ventures that he would do came in 1901, when for the Knights of Pythias and Jackson Ward, he would decide another bank was needed here. And he would charter and open the Mechanic Savings Bank. Here I am now on the corner of North 3rd Street and Clay Street in Jackson Ward, and behind me would be the final location of the Mechanic Savings Bank. Founded in 1901 by John Mitchell Jr., 
The bank would be part of the Knights of Pythias at first, and it would serve as their primary location to, to deposit their funds. But just like the true reformers bank before it, this bank would be available to anyone that would need it. But unlike the leadership of the true reformers, John Mitchell Jr. would forge a new path ahead and would take a step up from their leadership in a big way. John Mitchell Jr.'s national renown would prove helpful for his bank leadership. While he's well known in Jackson Ward in his time, he's not just known here. In fact, he would be known across the country because of his journalism and his newspaper. And he would parlay that, utilize his national awareness into joining the American Bankers Association, a predominantly white banking association. But that wasn't enough. He would push forward, and in 1904, he would move from just being a member to addressing the association. In Atlanta, they would have their national meeting, and he would step up and speak to the organization, highlighting the disenfranchisement happening to black Americans throughout the country. While he didn't know if that would affect his membership, if speaking out was going to hurt him in the long run, he knew he had to do it. He knew that he had the platform to highlight the issues facing African Americans across the country. In the same year that John Mitchell Jr. would address the American Bankers Association in Atlanta, he would also step up here in Richmond, helping to lead a protest against new laws in Virginia allowing discrimination on streetcars. John Mitchell Jr. and the leadership of the Mechanic Savings Bank along with the True Reformers Bank, Richard Tansel, the president of the Nickel Savings Bank in Churchill, another black owned bank here in Richmond, and also Maggie Walker, president of the St. Luke Penny Savings Bank, which had just opened a couple months earlier, decided to band together to protest the discrimination on streetcars. They would call out to black residents of Richmond saying, instead of taking that discrimination, instead of being okay with it, walk instead. Decide to use your feet instead of abiding by the discrimination that's now possible. The leadership of those four banks works together and they account that almost 80% of black residents in Richmond would walk for the next two years. However, in 1906, instead of that protest being fully successful in removing discrimination, Virginia passes stricter laws, not only allowing for discrimination on streetcars, but instead requiring it. John Mitchell Jr. would continue to serve as president of the Mechanic Savings Bank from this building in 1910 to 1920, when unfortunately, the bank fails. He would continue to lead the Richmond Planet for another nine years until 1929 when he passes away. Whether it was speaking at a national convention of bankers, using his nationally circulated newspaper, or leading a protest here in Richmond, Virginia, he would use his platform to speak up against social inequality and fighting for civil rights. And he would devote himself and his life to causing change in the name of progress for people here in Richmond, Virginia, and the United States.